the bit boy crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. Sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, where our goal is to help you find financial freedom through crypto assets. It is Tuesday, April 19th at 11.30, and uh, we got uh, Frankie Candles. My name is Frankie Candles. I'm going to be your host just for a little bit until we get DZ up here. And we got J Chains from Meta Money behind the boards. We got a little, uh, go. little, celebrity, uh, little celebrity stream here. Got the goon squad in the house. We got the goon squad in the house, guys. Bing bong. Uh, it is a nice 71 degrees here in the BitBoy Crypto Studios. Uh, like I said, my name is Frankie Candles. If you guys want to follow me, I do tons of TA on my channel, Frankie Candles. Uh, I do a live stream every single night at 545 right after ATB. I hope to see you guys in there. Uh, guys, we got a lot of interesting stuff going on with Bitcoin. We're pumping. Everybody's scared. Everybody's bearish. And then, you know... In typical Bitcoin fashion, when nobody expects it, we get a nice little bounce. Uh, we're going to take a look at the charts. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, we're going to check in on the DXY and the SPY as we usually do. And then I'm going to show you a little uh, chart from Glassnode that, as you guys know, yesterday, if you watched the stream, you will know that, you know, I was feeling very bearish and I still am due to the longer time frames. We got the confirmed blood diamond on the weekly. We got the confirmed blood diamond on the sixth day. There's a lot of bearish signs popping up, which is making me lean bearish, uh, you know, in the medium to short term or medium to long term. I did say yesterday that we could see a pump. We were seeing a big bullish divergence on the four hour chart. Uh, and I said we could get a pump. And uh, that is what is happening. Uh, how long is this going to last? We're going to take a look uh, in a sec at the charts and we'll touch on all those details. But first, let's do a quick little market overview here. Uh, we got the total crypto market cap at $1.92 trillion. Uh, volume, uh, you know, volume's hanging in there. Uh, Bitcoin dominance, 41.1%. And the ETH gas, uh, you know, for an ETH, uh, Ethereum transaction will cost you about 40, 49 guay or paraguay, as Ben says. Um, Let's just go down here and uh, check on things here. 41.5 for Bitcoin. Look at that. Above that 40K level again, as we were fighting to the death to get over that. Uh, Ethereum coming in at 31.10. Not too bad. Uh, let's see some top gainers here. GMT. Uh, <laughs> J-Chains, I know you're the, you're the metaverse guy. GMT is going absolutely nuts. Do you want to talk a little bit about what GMT is? Dude, it's crazy. So uh, Brian and I spent, I want to say about 10 grand on a bunch of NFTs. They're shoe NFTs. And you actually, it's like proof of workout or whatever. You actually go out, you can walk, you can jog, you can run, and you can make money. You can make that ROI back. I think we've got a trajectory to ROI in less than a month. We've already started to breed our additional pairs. So we've got a pair of each. We've got a walker, a jogger, and a runner. And now we're breeding so that we'll get another set. So Brian will send that to me and then I'll get in on it and we'll ROI faster, man. I can't wait. An insane, insane. Who, who thought that you could make money just walking around? You got uh, to love some of these concepts like the, you know, the walk to earn or you know, learn to earn, whatever. Yeah, They're it, really cool. It's insane. And you know, I was talking to Brian and he was saying, uh, he was like, you know what? And even if it, you know, he, he was saying he doesn't, he thinks it's a legitimate project, obviously. But, you know, even if this was like a big scam, he was, he was saying, uh, you know, you can't rug pull my physical gains. So uh, at least you'll make away with your health. <laughs> but yeah, no, seems like a legitimate project. Absolutely, uh, you know, doing really well. Up 48% on the week, doing very well. Uh, Thor chain up 19%. Thor, Thor just recently has been doing well. Uh, Zcash up. Uh, you know, 14% on the day, loop ring up 13%, and then sand up 13%. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to some of our stories here. We have two market watch stories, then we'll check out the charts real quick, and I'm going to kick it to DZ. Um, so after Bitcoin, after Bitcoin dropped to $38,200, trading volume spiked massively, showing by the dip tendencies. Uh, very interesting. Following a tough week on the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin plunged below 39K, indicating that traders are actively leaving the industry, uh, actively leaving the industry or setting their funds aside amid rising risk off tendencies as sentiment noticed. 
Uh, according to on-chain metric trackers and providers compared to the bearish trading sessions for Bitcoin lately, the trading volume on the rebound day has increased significantly, especially compared to the weekend trading sessions, which are usually followed by extremely low trading volume. Uh, Bitcoin, Luna, and other cryptocurrencies reached or jumped above Thursday uh, dip prices in the long term. Bitcoin still remains in a downtrend, which indicates that there is no global shift in sentiment among traders and investors. Uh, the movement of tech stocks and other risk on assets also speaks against the first cryptocurrency. Uh, as block, uh, Blockware analyst Will Clemente noticed, Bitcoin is still heavily correlated with most tech stock companies, which shows that the asset will most likely follow their performance on the market. As you guys know, uh, we take a look at the SPY uh, often uh, because Bitcoin typically moves in, uh, you know, moves with the SPY uh, as, you know, on the contrary, moves inverse to the DXY. We also check on that. Uh, but uh, continuing here, at press time, Bitcoin trades at $40,804 after losing 14% since the local high reached at the beginning of April. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... It, it, this, this is what I'll say, right? Uh, you know, we, I was, if you guys watched my stream last night, I was talking about uh, there were some shorter term things on, uh, you know, bullish divergences on the shorter time frames that were, you know, saying that we could come up a little bit. And we're going to take a look at the bearish case and the bullish case, because as you guys know, Bitcoin goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways. Uh, we prefer for it to go up or down. But uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a look at it. Um, you know, the, the one thing I will say, the longer time frames are looking bad. Uh, and you you just can't ignore that, right? This is a nice pump. And it, the one thing I will say is the when everybody is starting to feel bearish, you know, even if it's me, right? I'm feeling bearish. I, I'm just here to convey what I see on the charts, right? Uh, but, you know, when everybody starts to feel bearish, the fear is at a maximum, uh, you know, we're at, we're at ma not max fear, but we're, you know, fear and greed index is, uh, you know, in the fear range pretty hard. Uh, you know, this is typically where, uh, th this is typically where you see things go up, right? Um, so, Definitely uh, keep that in mind. You know, when, you, when everybody's, you know, screaming, we're going to 100K, you know, uh, we're, you know, we're a bunch of green candles, everybody's FOMOing in. That's typically when you see uh, a correction. So just remember that. Uh, and I'm going to show you the one thing that does make me feel a little bit bullish. Uh, you know, as you know, I am feeling a little bit bearish, but there is a glass node chart that I want to show you guys that could be indicating. This is one of the things that uh, could be indicating that we're at a bottom here. Uh, so moving on to our second article, Bitcoin holders targeting 100K is what's preventing 40% price drawdown data suggests. Uh, Bitcoin dropping to 25K or lower is unlikely thanks to, uh, thanks to hodlers hoping for all-time highs, not speculative traders, new research says. Uh, now, this is a wishy-washy article because at the end, it changes the sentiment, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> On-chain indicators remain much more bullish than spot price action, and those investors still in the market support the idea that BTC uh, will uh, we'll go far higher in the future. Uh, you know, J Chains, where do you fall on this, right? Because I, I was talking about how, you know, in my opinion, I think most retail is out of the market at this point. What would what would you say about that? Would you agree? Uh, well, I think that that was definitely the case. But you know, yesterday was tax day. That's Today right. things are going up. I wonder if there's any correlation that people are like, all right, tax man's paid. Let's get in. Here we go. Dump the rest of my money into Bitcoin and get rich. Juice the market. Let's go. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, this is interesting because, you know, I, I, I do think uh, since we've been coming down, I think a lot of retail has lost interest, uh, which is why we are seeing the market cushioned uh, by these long-term hodlers. Like even people buying that were buying higher are still just holding out. Uh, so I guess smarter money, you could call it. Uh, but uh, let's continue here. Uh, On-chain indicators remain much more bullish than the spot price. Uh, okay, uh, this is thanks to lack of short-term hodlers. Uh, the most recent all-time highs of 69K last November came with relatively few speculatory bets something which contrasts strongly with the all-time high during the last halving cycle in December 2017. It is, it is long-term hodlers hoping for fresh price discovery who are now supporting the market, not new STHs or short-term holders looking to buy the dip. Uh, scrolling down here. More broadly, however, those who purchased during Bitcoin's first trip above 60K have chosen to hodl, not sell. People are learning to hold their Bitcoin. I love it. I love it. Uh, never sell in the red, never sell in the red. Um, 
Some market participants remain extremely wary about capitu uh, a capitulation event occurring in the coming months for Bitcoin. Driven by macro, this could see $30,000 return uh, or worse, the 200-week moving average at 21,000 coming in as support. All depends on the United States Federal Reserve and its reaction to inflation, they say. Uh, this, this far from clear thanks to uh, the limited scope of uh, containment measures. Sorry, I can't see that. Uh, should heavy-handed policy become the norm, however, stocks, commodities, and risk, uh, risk assets would be hit hard. Heavy headwinds for crypto. Um, so yeah, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on with the Fed. We, we have a lot of things going on here, guys. We have, you know, the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. I, you know, we, we got a bunch of crazy stuff going on in the world right now, which obviously can affect the market. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump right into the charts here. Because uh, we got a lot of good stuff to look at. And you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to start with the uh, where they move my glass node. Um, I'm going to start off on this glass node chart. Now, this is the entity adjusted dormancy flow. Now, long story short, basically what this does is it indicates bottom, uh, you know, the bottom of Bitcoin. And it has it has done this successfully, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, like four or five times it's already done this. Um, now, Basically, how this works is every time you see this dip into this green this green rectangle right here, it marks a bottom. So you see right here, uh, we dipped into the green, marked a bottom, we came up. Right again, right here, came into the uh, came into the green. Uh, this is in 2015, marked you know basically the bottom, and then we came up right here, marked uh, we hit the green, marked the bottom of the 2018 bear market. We came up, and then we came into the green again. We all know what this. Uh, dump here in March of 2020 was, uh, hit the green again and came up. Now, the interesting thing is if I zoom into where we are right now, and then actually we touched the green right here again, which was another bottom before we came up. Now, this is what's got me feeling bullish, right? So if we zoom in right here, we have been in this green for a longer than we've ever been, right? So this is the one thing. Now, granted, if looking at the regular charts, there's not too much long term that looks bullish. But this, I mean, this thing has been right, you know, one, two, three, four, five times already. This is the sixth time. And uh, we've been in here for longer than we ever have. So this is definitely making me feel a little bit bullish. However, you know, these things are right until they're wrong. So, you know, it's got a good track record. So it seems pretty accurate. But, you know, maybe the six, maybe it plays out the sixth time. Maybe it doesn't. But this is making me feel a little bit bullish, uh, you know, because I, I'm having a hard time finding bullish stuff on the regular charts. But this is making me feel bullish, right? Um, all right. So I did just want to point that out because, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of bearish stuff going on. I've been talking about a lot of bearish stuff. So there's, there's some bullish hopium right there. Very interesting. That thing's been spot on about five times. So hopefully six... Uh, can uh, really be the be the next. Uh, hopefully, we're not wrong on the sixth time. Uh, but uh, taking a look at the regular charts here for Bitcoin, right? Weekly blood diamond confirmed. We know that. Uh, you know, money flow crossing over into the red. Typically, not a good sign. Last time this happened, we saw a fifty percent correction. Now, I do just want to be clear, guys. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I have been bearish, you know, in the, you know, recently, I'm not, I'm not saying that's impossible to go up. I want to be clear about that, right? I'm just, I'm just conveying what's on the charts. I'm reading what's on the charts and I'm letting you guys know, uh, you know, what it means, right? So, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean that we can't go up and we're, and we're going to talk, uh, you know, we're going to zoom in here in a second. I'm going to give you guys the bullish case and the bearish case, because there always is a bullish case and a bearish case, right? Uh, you know, maybe we do go down to 29 K or lower, right? But it doesn't mean we're hundred percent going there because there's a blood diamond on the weekly, but it definitely doesn't look good, especially with the money flow crossover on the weekly and the VWAP crossover at the same time. Not a good, not a good look on the weekly. Uh, and then also uh, on the six day, let's just pull up our six day real quick. Um, I'm going to have to add it here. A six day? Six day. Awkward, awkward time frame. Yeah. What, what day do you uh, skip when you go on the six day? Is it <laughs> the Lord's day? Or is the it Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the Lord's day. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, six day blood diamond has confirmed, right? Also not good. Last time this happened, we dropped, I think about 50%. Um, yeah, I mean, last time we had a six day blood diamond was right down here. And, uh, you know, just roughly, you know, you came down you know, about 50 or 60%. I, I'm pretty far away from the screen here. So I don't know how close to the top of this candle, but it's about 50%, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so definitely, it doesn't mean it's going to 100% play out like that. I'm not saying it's 100% going to, you know, again, the market has matured, right? Logarithm, logarithmic regression, right? The, as the market matures, the moves get less volatile. So I don't think we'll come down that much. 
Um, so, you know, and we never saw Max Euphoria, so maybe we never see Max Payne. That would make sense. Um, but, you know, maybe, you know, it could bring us down a decent amount, but we'll have to see, you know, it could get invalidated. That's not possible. Um, but let's go ahead on to the daily, right? Daily money flow creeping up towards that zero line, looking for a crossover. Uh, but you do have the VWAP above the zero line, so that could come down and pull you back into the red, but hoping for a, a crossover there into the green. Um, now, let's just, uh, I just want to point this out. Yesterday, this is kind of what I was talking about yesterday on the stream. Uh, we did have a big bullish divergence on the four hour. That's how I was able to, you know, predict that this was going to come up here. Uh, you have mo the momentum waves making higher lows, right? And then you have price making lower lows. That's a bullish divergence. Typically, you see price come up after that. And, you know, just textbook right here. This is a textbook bullish divergence. Got a nice little pump. How much, uh, how much did we come up exactly? Uh, you know, about, you know, 7%, not too shabby. Uh, zooming in, let's come to the one hour. And uh, actually, you know, we're just going to come down to the 30 minutes so we can kind of see our levels a little better now. Um, now, right here, this, uh, yeah, we got two resistance lines here. We broke through this one, getting rejected from this one currently. We'll have to see what happens. Now, uh, let's talk about the bullish case, right? Because I, I think you guys know the bearish case, or at least what I think the bearish case is. Uh, you know, I think we, we could, with that blood diamond, easily get pushed down to 29K, uh, possibly lower, depending on what happens when we get to that golden pocket at about 29K. Uh, but, um, you know, let, let, let's look at the uh, bullish hope here. So taking a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the higher hourlies, right? So you got money flow coming up on the six hour right there. Nice curvature on that money flow. Not a bad look. Four hour, you know, curving down, but generally moving up towards that zero line. Uh, the three hour, now here you go. This three hour money flow crossover, this could be, I think, you know, you do have the VWAP coming down. So, you know, I don't know how long this wave will last, but, you know, this could bring you up a decent amount. Uh, you know, I think this is, this is basically, you know, these money flow crossovers on the higher hourly timeframes, or not higher hourly, but on these hourly timeframes, uh, you know, they typically do bring you up a decent amount. As you can see, uh, last time we had a money flow crossover. I'm not even going to measure it, but you guys can kind of just get the idea. You got a money flow crossover into the green here. We came up big time. Uh, now, will we come? Will we come up that much? I'm not really sure, but they are very powerful. So I kind of have, uh, you know, decent hopes for this money flow crossover. I think it could bring us up, uh, you know, maybe to this level here at about 43. 232. I should have my glasses on. Uh, and then uh, we do have another level here at about 44, 262. Uh, you know, we could possibly see these levels. Now, with the way the longer time frames are work are looking, you know, I'm not having the uh, it's it's kind of mixed signals here. I don't have the big, I don't have big, big hopes for this, uh, just because the the weekly and the longer time frames take time to play out. People are like, Oh, there's a blood diamond on the weekly, but we're going, we're, we're pumping. That that happens. You see, the price is volatile, right? So you know, even if we're in a, a macro downtrend, you know, the weekly has blood diamond. We're in a downtrend. You can see pretty big pumps in those downtrends. Remember, the weekly candles have an entire week of price action in them. So uh, not uncommon to see decent pumps uh, in a downtrend like this. You know, corrective moves. Now, I think uh, that would be the bullish case for me. These two levels up here that we just touched on. Uh, now you do have the 200 moving average right here. Um, you know, that would act as resistance as well. But, you know, m my absolute main bullish case, right, uh, for the shorter medium term would be, you know, maybe we work our way back up to the top of this bear flag, right? And this is another reason why you want to be careful too, because although even if we pump back up to the top of this bear flag, right, that, that is not impossible. I think, you know, best, best, best case scenario, we could come back up and test the top of this bear flag. But remember, it's a bear flag. This is a bearish continuation pattern. They don't play out 100% of the time, but a lot of the times you come down, you, you range up in a, you know, in an ascending channel here, and then you continue to the downside, right? So you just want to keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, not possible. I think the absolute most bullish case, uh, and then we could reassess when we get up here if it looks like we would break out or not. Uh, right now, I think the main bullish case is to get up, uh, you know, to these levels right here and then possibly move up closer to the top of this bear flag. And then we can assess the new information once we get there to see if we could break out towards our original, uh, you know, relief rally pump uh, to about 55K. So maybe this isn't out of the questions just yet, uh, but with the way the weekly looks, I, I don't, I would still be leaning that we break down. Um, but yeah, and then just real quick uh, to check on the DXY uh, before I pass you guys off to DZ. 
DXY is showing strength, guys. The DXY is showing strength. I, you know, I didn't know if we were going to make it up to this trend line up here, but I think it is possible. Now, the DXY moves slow, but we are definitely seeing strength. I think we can continue up to at least this line here at about 101.6, uh, right? So, uh, you know, the, the, the more this goes up, the typically the uglier Bitcoin will get. So uh, not a good sign as well. And then real quick on the SPY, is DZ in here? Yeah, he's right there. Okay. Um, yeah. So for the SPY, look, this is, uh, you know, as you guys know, Bitcoin typically is correlated to uh, the SPY. Uh, we were losing this level yesterday. We tested it as resistance came down a little more. Yellow X didn't play out like uh, they typically do. And we broke back above this level. So that could be, uh, you know, this, this maybe like J chains, like you said, maybe it's, uh, you know, tax, uh, taxes were just due. So maybe people, you know, either got, uh, you know, they paid their taxes, they know how much extra money they have, maybe they're dumping it into Bitcoin, um, but and the stock market, but yeah, you know, got a little pop here on the SPY. So another reason why, uh, you know, we might have seen uh, Bitcoin get a little pump here. So, uh, you know, just a uh, long story short, you know, we are pumping. I do think, uh, you know, in the most bullish case, we could come up to this, these levels, uh, you know, these levels up here. And then, you know, maybe, you know, absolute best case scenario uh, for the short term, maybe we come up to the top of this bear flag. Not impossible. Not impossible. We'll have to see what happens. Bitcoin going to do what Bitcoin going to do. Guys, that's all I got. If you guys want to follow me, Frankie Candles on YouTube. I do uh, two hour live streams doing TA the whole time. I look at your altcoins at 545 right after ATB. Speaking of ATB, here's the man, the myth, the legend. Woo! Here he is. Bing hey bong. Now. That's a, that's a DXY. DZ's huh. excited yell. Uh, I want to hey. give a quick shout out to El Matador and NFT Touchables. NF Touchables. I uh, just got this in the mail last night. Beautiful. I love it. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, uh, hey, make sure that you uh, smash the like for Frankie Candles, Candle Mafia, and DZ. God, I'm, I'm so used to the headphones. You know, I don't know what to do with myself at this point. You just know? hold the mic awkwardly. All right, here's the deal. You know, I'm going to do like a little, uh, like a prop comic. You know, I'm gonna like, hey, I have a painting here. All right, we're going to get right into the stories here. It's already 1152. And I know, you know, we get excited about the charts. And uh, I'm starting to feel, you know, a little bullish off that, uh, that one chart. I liked what I saw. I did like what I saw. But let's get into some stories. We might have to adjust the camera just a tad there. All right, we good? We looking good? Went a little too high. You know what? That happens. Sometimes it happens with the Bitcoin price. Just not yet. Come on, where's that parabolic uh, run up? All right, we're gonna uh, get into ooh, a little North Korea action here. U.S. government warns that North Korea is targeting crypto firms. Uh oh. Uh, three major U.S. government entities issued a joint alert on cyber threats faced by companies working in the blockchain and crypto sector. They include the FBI, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, and the U.S. Treasury Department, and uh, they. Let's see, the public announcement referred to as a cybersecurity advisor was posted on uh, the CAISA official website. And they're saying the U.S. government has observed that hacking groups believed to be sponsored by North Korean regime are targeting crypto companies. Are they still mad about that Seth Rogen film, do you think? I think yeah. it's that. They have to be. You know, they made fun of it, you know, called them short. I think South Park was still mad at the South Park people. Didn't he get, like, really sick? Uh, Kim, yeah, yeah, he disappeared. He was out of the limelight for a long time. His sister was running things. She's and uh, a, She's the one you got to look out for, man. Didn't she get someone killed or something? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to speculate on that. You know, next thing you know, some black SUV pulls up beside me. All right, the groups mentioned in the report, the Lazarus Group, APT38, Blue Noroff, and Stardust Koyima present what's dubbed as an advanced persistent threat. This means a cybersecurity threat actor can gain authorized access to computer systems and remain undetected for a long period of time. You know, we saw this with uh, the, the power structure where we had all those power grid hacks back in the day, uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago. Uh, it listed mitigation procedures like patching software, employing multi-factor authentication, and educating employees on phishing attacks. I think the last part is the most important part because usually it's people uh, working you know, while inside the building opening uh, scam emails. So, you know, that's typically where we see. And guys, let me know if I say you know. Uh, me and Frank, we're trying to work on reducing the you knows, and I caught myself. So if I say you know, type in all caps you know. So, you know, it will help me, you know. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know what hey, I mean? just so you know, the you know is better than the um. <sighs> it's better than um, it's better than uh, but I will try to reduce the amount that I am doing it. 
That said, last week, U.S. government named Lazarus as the main perpetrator behind the $600 million hack on Ronin. This was the big uh, bridge behind the Axie Infinity uh, group. Chain Owls has noted that the Lazarus group was involved in a hack against KuCoin in 2020 and another undisclosed ex exchange in 2018. The two attacks net Lazarus more than a half billion in total from the two events. Couple that with the 600 million. We're looking at over a billion dollars. That's a lot of fake grocery stores that they're able to you know, put on those streets. I don't know if you've seen any of those documentaries, but and I don't need, again, I don't want to speak on what I don't know, but there's some hungry people over there. So, you know, that might be, uh, you know, maybe it goes to uh, feeding some people. Maybe it's just going to be wasted by a despotic regime. We don't know. We don't know. I like to be an optimist in those situations. Uh, Defiance Capital, Arthur uh, Chong, posted a tweet thread on the 15th about it. He said, based on our research and conversation with leading cybersecurity experts, we believe Blue Noroff uh, are running an organized campaign to tar target all prominent organizations in the crypto space so we have these hackers stealing tons and tons of stuff chong he recently lost 1.7 million in nfts and his firm lost a further three quarters of a million from a separate wallet due to the same attack narrowly avoiding losing 13 million so the hackers are getting more sophisticated the prizes are getting larger the carrot at the end of the stick it's it's worth you know these people i said it i said it it's worth them coming after you know with targeted Wow, it is really difficult. You know what? I should just ignore the fact that I say it. Just lean into it, you know? You hey, know what I mean? It's your brand, dude. It's my brand. I don't want that to be my brand. He says you know a lot. But what does he know? That's what they're going to say. All right. U.S. representatives, uh, moving on here. U.S. representatives introducing a bill to deregulate power zones and good old Bayou, Louisiana. Potential benefits for Bitcoin mining. Louisiana, of course, Tons and tons of drilling offshore around that area. Uh, good old BP oil spill. State representative crypto enthusiast Mark Wright, who's rarely wrong, has proposed before his state's HOR that the bill number 1010, which would allow, you know, it's a 10 out of 10, shout out to Alex, would allow the creation of deregulated industrial power zones. The bill was presented at the House on the 6th. Should it become the law, Deregulated Industrial Power Zones Act, the DIPSA? I don't like that. Is there a way to make that into pizza? I think they should have made it into pizza. Would allow a government authority to petition the state land office to designate a tract of land within the parish as a power zone. It's always parishes in Louisiana. Creating deregulated power zones would make Louisiana an attractive place for Bitcoin miners. And I just realized we should probably keep the word pizza away from any kind of government official. Next thing you know, people are going to be checking basements, and we don't want that to happen, of course, so... You know, just moving on here, moving on here. We also have big sandbox news. Jay Chains, you're the metaverse expert. Yep. You tell little people about your channel. What What do you do with your channel? Or what is it called? Uh, our channel is Meta Money. Here, let me turn the mic on just so I could, you know, I feel like I'm talking to everybody now. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey what's he's up, waving. Man? Hey, yeah. he's down there. Yeah. Hey. Oh, oh, just just a little guy in the corner. Don't mind me. Uh, yeah, so Meta Money is our channel. We talk all about the metaverse. You know, we we look at projects in the space. We look at... Pretty much the whole ecosystem as it develops. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, lot being built. Will Nothing. Sandbox win? <sighs> Will there be one winner, three winners, 20 I, winners? I have a feeling as long as we can get interoperability, uh, anybody that has a good platform will win. Like for me personally, and I know that we're doing a lot with Sandbox, but like the voxel style is no. not my jam, dude. It's not my jam. I yeah. like, you know, what Everdome's doing with the hyper-realistic. I agree. And I, you know, I look at it as... I look at it as video game consoles. Yeah. We have Sony. We have Xbox. We have the Switch. Switch is real popular. And you have PC gaming. I mean, that's four right there. So it might not just be one. All right. Sandbox gears up to raise $400 million at a $4 billion valuation. Raising that. Bloomberg reported the round yesterday, adding, or just this morning, adding that considerations are ongoing. Details such as the size and valuation could be subject to change based on market sentiment and investor demand, a.k.a. will Bitcoin pump or dump? That will change the, the valuation. News comes less than six months after they raised $93 billion in a Series B round. According to Crunchbase, other previous investors include True Global Ventures, Square Enix, Galaxy Interactive, Angel Hub, 
and DZ and J Chains. Uh, yeah, we yeah. bought some sand. Hey, hey, we got hey. that sand, baby. Sandbox release on iOS, Android, and Windows allows users to create their own universe inside the game using different elements. 2018 Hong Kong based NFT digital property firm Anamoka Brands acquired Pixel, the original developer and publisher behind the sandbox. Pixel, not really a great name. Anamoka, I like it. I like it. You know, a little close to tapioca, but I like Anamoka <laughs> here. Co founder Sebastian Bourget said in an interview with Reuters that the latest round is poised to help the firm expand the metaverse economy beyond just gaming. They don't want our gaming takes. They don't want our sandbox take. They want our tapioca pudding take. Where do you stand on tapioca pudding? Uh, I'm still afraid of it. When I was a kid, somebody <laughs> said it was fish eyes. <laughs> and so, I ate tapioca, man. Like fear, like real fear. You'd start shaking. You know, you you get PTSD when you see fish yeah. eyes. Yeah, just fish eyes wiggling in the. It is weird. Zone. What the heck's a tapioca? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, you know, let us know in the comments. This isn't me trying to game the YouTube algorithm, but you know, if we do want to game that YouTube algorithm, go ahead, hit that like button. Hit yeah. that like button. I'm not going to say another sentence until we get two more likes. Did I say two? I meant two dozen. Oh, we got two dozen already. Two score. Two hundred. Two thousand. Hey, I'm going to put, put up a poll. Okay. And say, do you like tapioca? Oh, a, a voting poll. Okay, yeah, yeah, never yeah. mind. Okay. Do you like tapioca? Uh, I think it's I-O-C-A, tapioca. Now, I'm not bullish on tapioca. Uh, well, you know, who knows? Who knows? All right, Animoca Brands. Moving on. You're moving on. I know the people that I'm. I'm actually curious what this poll is going to say. Yeah, me too. What is your view on tapioca? Is it is it food? I don't know. They're clear. It's weird. It makes no sense to me. All right, Animoca Brands. Tell, show me that in Mother Nature. This weird clear thing that you're eating. Animoca Brands buys major stake in Aussie Digital Service Agency. Non-fungible token investment giant Animoca Brands, just talking about them. The people behind Sandbox has acquired a significant stake in the marketing agency B Media, has locations in Perth, Melbourne, and Sydney, and provide Web2 firms with advertising and digital strategy. Since nine years ago, while the company isn't geared towards the crypto sector, investment seems to be part of their immediate aim to shepherd companies into Web3, opening them with uh, open arms saying, hey, come on in. The water's warm. It's okay. Keep your shorts on. According to an announcement shared with Cointelegraph, B Media will be tasked with seeking out partnerships with the top Australian brands relating to Animoca's various blockchain focused initiatives, such as NFTs, launching an open metaverse. Of course, some of their top brands are Foster's, it's Australian for beer, and Outback Steakhouse. No rules. What's Outback? I can't remember, but B Media is. Was it? Blooming Onion. Yeah, what's their slogan? I felt they had some sort of slogan. Anyways. B Media has begun an aggressive hiring practice, let us know in the comments, in the fields of blockchain development and project management to support the expanding pipeline of opportunities that the company will handle. CEO will retain a minor stake and continue with his current role, outline his enthusiasm for diving into blockchain tech with his firm, said at the corporate level, I'd be surprised if there aren't many companies of thinking of a strategy in this place, uh, in the space. Animoca, the crypto unicorn, valued around $5 billion. Well, nope, not lately, and has been on a relentless uh, investment spree over the past couple of years. Last week alone, uh, Cointelegraph reported that the company acquired a 96% stake in Eden Games wow. for $15 million and a 70% stake in uh, Darewise Entertainment and Eden Games. What happened to Adam Games? Animoga Brands, two uh, other Australian investments include gaming firms Blowfish Studios and Grease Monkey Games. Were you a Hootie and the Blowfish fan? I, know, I like how I like just get this article and, you know, no, let's derail the conversation afterwards. Yeah. It's Sandbox. They're cool. All right. We know what they're doing. The drummer from Hootie and the Blowfish grew up in my town. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you know him? You yeah. know, like y'all go to the same tattoo parlor or something? Is no, that how no, you know I mean, you, his No, this was, face this was, was I mean, this wall. was like when we were young. Um, we, I was like probably in middle school. So he was like a local celebrity for a little while, but. Okay. So oh, did, uh, I want to be with you. So did Bob Odenkirk. Hey. He's funny, funny guy. Okay. It seems like Chet likes tapioca. I'm flabbergasted. You, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally reeling from you this. Grow, you grow, I grow, says tapioca is the white man's boba tea. Wow. Wow, I'm missing out. I would say it's the, the nursing home boba tea. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I went there. All right, let's talk a little uh, blizzard. Ooh, did it just get chilly in here? World of Warcraft publisher isn't doing NFTs. They said no to NFTs for now. 
Although the company is currently getting acquired by Microsoft as part of the latter's metaverse pivot. Oh, it's going to be funny if they get dragged into it. Kicking and screaming. Uh, they'll thank us afterwards, as Tyler Durden says. President uh, was quick to shoot down suggestions that they would be looking into capitalizing on the NFT industry. No one is doing NFTs, he tweeted over the uh, weekend. And he said, Blizzard is polling interest in NFTs and play-to-earn games. Uh, replying to the game journalist who asked that, no one is doing NFTs. Uh, thanks, Quick, for making all your players poor. Are you happy now? The poll, Robinson mentions, was designed by British market research company YouGov, and it asked Blizzard fans what they think of several emerging technologies, including virtual reality, video game subscription services, cross-platform play, and the metaverse. The parent company Activision is currently in the process of getting acquired by Microsoft in a $68.7 billion deal. We like to round that up to a $69 billion deal expected to finalize in the next year. Purpose of the acquisition? To provide the building blocks for the metaverse. So they're trying to be the Lego blocks. They're trying to be the Ragsy of the metaverse here. And we talked about this months ago on ATB. Microsoft, they're just doing an uh, acquisition strategy. Hey, we're going to buy you. Hey, we're going to buy you. We have all this cash. Our cash is losing 1% of its value every single month. Might as well spend it, spend some billions, get some gaming companies. What's going to be interesting to see is the SEC going to step in and say, look, we have a gaming monopoly forming. And it doesn't seem like uh, they're anywhere close to that. So I, I would say probably not. What would you say? I, uh, yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, they don't, they don't break up the tech giants anymore. You know, that was kind of a, a relic from the 90s. And I'm going to grab my water real quick. Today's episode brought to you by Pure Life, you know. Oh, also Matador Painting. So was that thank you. Pura Vida? Is that how you would say that in Spanish? Yeah, Pura. I don't know. Vida la Pura. It just sounds like... Life of the Pure. Yeah, or P. I don't know. Jeez. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. Hey. Is this the end of the NFT rug pulls, Jay Chains? No. Well, you know, Coindesk is saying it might be. On to our next article here. Uh, the ER721R standard guarantees refunds for non-fungible tokens, offering greater security for buyers and legitimacy for creators, but risk remains for both sides of the trade. Yeah, that would be obvious here. Marketplace is overwhelmed by fraudulent projects. Many collectors of NFTs have suffered from maybe the most notorious method of all. Rug pulls where the creators of the asset ditch the project and abscond. I like the word abscond with the investors' funds. I don't know if we're going to see this too much. You know, uh, just kind of summarizing this article. It's a new platform. I, I'm sorry. It's a new ERC, which is uh, Ethereum. Uh, basically, you, you put forth a, an amendment on the protocol, and then it'll if it gets voted on, you know, it gets approved. It'll then pop up as a you know basically a smart contract residing on the EVM uh, mainnet. So what is, uh, so they're trying to make a little alliance here. They're trying to make it where essentially, I guess it will be into the contract that the, the buyer can buy it back. But, you know, maybe people are going to mess around with that smart contract. Can you imagine if Board Ape, they were able to grab their NFT back from your wallet and then just give you that 0 0.08 mint fee? That'd be like, I'm sure people are going to, you know, maybe, I don't know. I'm sure there's tech people saying how wrong I am, but. I can easily see someone coding that into the contract and saying, oh, yeah, it did go do a 10x. Ah, oh, that's mine now. Oh, it did a thousand X. Yeah, I'm definitely rug pulling everybody. Of course, if they did that, it would tank the project by like three ETH. So then it'd only be worth $320,000. Uh, I don't know. Hey, the mutants are $90,000. I'm still so mad. If anybody's got a, a mutant you want to sell for cheap, get at <laughs> DM me, please. please. Uh, I've regret. I don't think uh, we have to worry about rug pulls as much in the future because the Department of Justice prosecuted those two younger fellows. I think they were about 20. They deleted the Discord. They deleted the Twitter. And then they are in the midst of launching a second project. And the DOJ came down on them. And they're maybe facing time here. So after that, I think maybe going to... <laughs> No, uh, maybe going to uh, shake up the industry and maybe frighten some people into doing, you know, no more rug pulls. You saw what, and the space is getting more educated. You saw what happened with Floyd Mayweather. His NFT crash, it, it, it failed. It was an utter failure. Hey, you're a great boxer, Floyd Mayweather. Maybe, you know, you got to build, build, build if you're going to make some NFTs. And your track record said, 
I'm going to mint it and I'm going to forget it and I'm going to laugh at all the ETH that you gave me. He's got enough money. He's just, got enough money. He should give, just be a give, corner. Give guy. some ETH to us. Give some ETH to J Chains. Give some ETH to Frankie Candles. Give some to DZ. I need some. Yeah. Yeah. We need some. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we would never do that. We would never do that. We build, we build, uh, we're still building out stuff on Pluto Alliance. You know, maybe there's going to be some J Chain, uh, and Brian, maybe some meta money. Maybe you could do like cool money bills, like Monopoly money, but it's your faces. For our know. NFT drop? Meta money. Meta money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've got NFT stuff. We're, we're working on it right now, man. It's going to happen. Yeah, we're working on a Cardano drop. It's going to, you know, change the world. Uh, XRP, you know, I probably already said too much, though. I, I, I got to just sip from the water and uh, let the speculation rise here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute your microphone so you can't say too much more. Oh, man. Cut me off. Cut me off. All right, let's uh, talk a little Wolf of Wall Street here. Great movie. Jordan Belfort offers crypto course for one Bitcoin. Uh, getting roasted hard on Twitter for this. Hey, I would have gone to his Miami mansion and hung out. I wouldn't pay a Bitcoin for it, though. The real-life inspiration of Wolf of Wall Street presented his first crypto course called the Mastermind Workshop at his Miami Beach Villa for a price of one Bitcoin per person. Nine blockchain aficionados and businesses attended the cryptocurrency class over the course of a weekend. I'm sure they had a great time, you know. Can't wait to do this soon. Uh, I don't know. What do you think they're doing? Uh, snorting quaaludes? Yeah, I'm probably. kidding, of course. That's a scene from the movie. They probably don't. They probably don't do uh, that. I, I think he's a, he's a hypocrite, for sure. Why so? Well, there was some video that came out maybe a month to... Oh, yeah. He was against Bitcoin. He's against Bitcoin. And he's against influencers using this for like financial gain. And now he's doing this. Pay me, pay me a bitty and come have dinner with me and hang out at my house. Like the guy's trash. <laughs> Trail grinder uh, comment and the Twitch. I, I don't even know if I should say it. I'll, I'll leave that up to you if you want to say it because it's talking about your brand. Meta MILFs are the lady followers name for the meta money. Of course they are. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Trail Grinder. I love you, brother. What kind of trail are you grinding here? Okay, happy one. In a video advertising the event, former stockbroker and convicted criminal said he's been heavily investing in crypto and NFTs, which he refers to as the future of finance. He definitely wasn't saying that six months ago. He, in 99, he pled guilty to scamming over 1,500 individual investors out of $200 million, became a motivational speaker after spending 22 months in jail and publishing his now famous, some say infamous book, his, uh, and then, uh, his TikTok account, Wolf of Wall Street, has over 3.7 million followers. This latest emphasis on Bitcoin, the other hand, is a sharp departure from his prior views on crypto, which he voiced in a 2018 video headline, Bitcoin market has finally run out of greater fools. I guess we're all fools then. Belfort claimed that the rising value of Bitcoin is due to the greater fool hypothesis, which asserts that overpriced assets can be sold for a profit as long as a bigger fool can be found. That is until the market runs out of people to dupe. He then describes crypto as a mass delusion, freaking craziness, and a sinking ship. His crypto workshop now is billed as a intimate financial experience. Wait a minute, how intimate? Just because we're in Florida doesn't pay anyways. In which guests would learn about the metaverse, crypto, and DeFi. The attendees were picked from a pool of 600 applicants and reportedly paid a single Bitcoin for a seat at the weekend workshop, which also includes activities like jet skiing, yachting, and supper at his home. <laughs> Among those in attendance were crypto uh, miner from Kazakhstan and proprietor of an Idaho roofing firm. Despite his long-held aversion to financial regulation, Previously ad advocated for massive regulation with digital assets in 2021, saying the sooner that big regulation enters the market, the better for Bitcoin, stablecoins, and everything else. I remember this tweet. I was knee deep in the NFT scene, and all the NFT OGs were like, oh, this guy's just going to pump a project soon. Yeah, he's going to pump an NFT soon. Because we, you see the playbook over and over, especially last year. Now, there's less new celebrities enter the space, but you see a celebrity buy a punk, buy a board ape, and then, you know, nine times out of 10 a month later, hey, I got my own drop. They called that on his case. They're like, look, he's going to try to do a scammy NFT. He's going to try to do a scammy NFT. Two, I think it was one or two weeks later after he did his first NFT tweet. Sure enough, he was going to do an NFT. You know what they did? They came after him. They came after him hard. He canceled the project. So, you know, the space is maturing. So I have faith in this. And yes, I realize that I'm saying, you know, on the NFT side, at least, he's putting his money where his mouth is. 
In October 21, he allegedly paid $423,000 for a CryptoPunk, which he now uses as his Twitter profile picture. I like how they say he allegedly paid. I guess they, maybe he doesn't have a Twitter blue service where you can verify. Where are we at on time? 12.15? We're getting up there. We're, We're getting, getting up there. there. What are your thoughts on uh, Jordan Belfort and maybe Wolf of Wall Street? I mean, it's like one of those stories that everyone knows. And if you invest in any kind of industry, like you know what he did. And basically, the, it set the framework for hopefully regulating a lot of that moving forward. I think he's kind of a, a trash guy, but, you know, it is what it is. The world needs garbage men. Yeah, the famous saying, you know, the world does need janitors too. You know, this is a good message. Jay Chains, I'm amazed you have the time to create content for us. Still do what you do while having a newborn. Full credit to you. So, Thanks, Royals. You know what? If, if uh, all the parents in the chat, hit that like button. Yeah. Get a little can... like. There's a lot of family people behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we, we wish them all the good nights of rest and uh, all the good things. Good health for them and their family. So. It's a, it's a good thing. But yeah, there's a lot of babies in the office, correct? Uh, I know. Of, like under a year? Uh, Justin and myself, I think, are the only ones that I know. Huddy's got a couple kids. Oh, yeah. Who yeah, else? I guess some are older. You're right. Yeah. yeah there's, there's a couple of uh, toddlers and tykes going around. Tykes, he said. Cardano Records uh, records 400 new projects, building on Cardano in a month, bringing the total to almost 900. Of that 400, only 398 are NFTs. Uh, let's see here. Actual number is probably a little different. Ada Network underwent a major upgrade September of last year, included the implementation of smart contract capabilities, allowing the network to scale at a faster pace than ever before. Recently, a key number of milestones have been reached as blockchain development has soared thanks to the update. At the same time, Cardano anticipates another wave of improvements with the June 29th Vassal hard fork. Currently, over 900 projects are being built as of the 18th meaning that the blockchain network has added almost 400 new projects building on its network in a little over a month. Uh, IOHK tweeted, as of today, almost nearly 900 are building. This goes up day by day. Uh, IOHK, definitely uh, check them out if you want to stay up to date with the Cardano upgrades. It's worth mentioning, uh, uh, it's worth mentioning uh, that last month, Finbold reported Tim Harrison, marketing communications director at IOHK, revealed that there were 517 projects being built Indeed, uh, this would include NFTs, DeFi, and new wallets are being built on the platform. In terms of NFTs, Snoop Dogg, the hip-hop artist, and uh, Snoop Lion, I like to call him Snoop Lion, announced he is reestablishing his presence in the crypto industry. His latest collaboration is with Clay Nation, which will be launching an NFT collection on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, looking forward to that. Clay Nation, where are you at? Uh, let me know in the comments if you have a Clay. I'm in the Clay Nation. Smash I have my like. land. Smash a like if you like Clay. Smash a like if you like Clay Nation, period. Uh, Wilbur and Gromit or something. It's the, the English guy and his dog. I think he didn't talk or something. Uh, elsewhere, a data acquired by them on the 18th revealed that they added almost 100,000 wallets to its network between March 17th and the uh, of March and April. Just before the ERC-20 converter launch with Charles, uh, yeah, Chucky, with Chucky later adding, we just getting started. Yeah, that's a normie tweet. I like it. I like it, Chucky. He does know marketing. Notably, the number of wallets on Cardano stands at uh, 3.4 million as of April after hitting the 3 million wallet milestone earlier this year. I think a large part of that is Nami. So uh, shout out to Nami. Shout out to Alessandro. Uh, founded Space Buds and the NAMI wallet, uh, really doing awesome things for Cardano. And I think without NAMI and JPEG Store, Cardano wouldn't be anywhere near where it's at now because a high percentage of these new projects are NFTs. There's two to five launching every single day. So you look at, uh, you know, an average of four for the next 30 days, 120 just building, uh, you know, for the next month. So NFTs, really, really. Wallace, Wallace and Gromit. Wallace Thank you very much. California Raisins. I forgot about the California celebrity Raisins. My mother match. was obsessed with the California Raisins. And then Celebrity Deathmatch as well. Oh, man. I forgot about Celebrity Deathmatch. That was a good show. That was on MTV, right? Yeah, it was on MTV. Uh, that was when TRL was like, you know, the cultural zeitgeist of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, people would go to Times Square, hang out at the window. Move over, Good Morning America. TRL's in the house. Who was, so it was, uh, 
wasn't Carson Daly, right? Did he host that? Yeah, Carson Daly. With then Carmen he had Electra? his own show. I don't think it did that well. I think they had it on. They had it on like four o'clock in the morning or something. No, it was like after this was back when I think even Jimmy Fallon was doing the late late show, and then mm-hmm. it was like after that, or maybe even after a show after that or something. But yeah, Carson Daly. I think he won the game of life, right? Like he got in, he was like high to the culture, then he got out. I'm sure he has good money. I'm sure he's, you know, not hurting. He's not eating ramen or nothing. Hey, I like ramen. Nothing against ramen. Hey, really quick, uh, that you touched on the story with Charles Hoskinson and you called him Chucky. Chucky. If your na- if your name was Charles, would you go by Chaz or Chucky? Well, I can't do Chaz because of uh, the Seattle Autonomous Zone. <laughs> like <laughs> Where's where's my nose rings? Where's my purple hair? Yeah. Uh, where's my pronouns? Uh, okay, you know. next. I'm sorry. Next. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. All right. Ripple price analysis. XRP Army, where are you at? Let us know. Liquid Television, another good example. Ripple price analysis after disappointing weekly close. XRP facing huge resistance. On the daily time frame, the Bears defended the resistance at 80 and did not allow Ripple to break out of the Ichomoku cloud, pushing the price down again. Currently is getting thicker, and along with dynamic resistance, which is marked red here, uh, these are the main challenges for XRP. This resistance range between 80 and 85 should be easy to get broken. All right, I don't like how they're removing the zero here. I get it. Oh, we, you know, we remove the zero. Get out of here. It's 80 cents. Quit showing me eight. I don't like it. Just stop doing that, I, crypto potato. You know what I don't like? The other thing where people are putting the comma where we put a period. And yes. Like, like, what is that about? What is up with that? And what is up with people flipping their calendars all around? You look at a date and it's like 22, 7, 22. Like, what am I looking like, at? Wait, what? Huh? Or, you know, 34, 22. Like, is, is this a, is this a, a master lock? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the combo to your uh, school locker? <laughs> Oh, school lockers. I miss school lockers. All right. If the bulls can break out of this range, then the resistance at 93 will likely be tested again. The latter is the level that uh, it failed to break in 2022 in its previous two attempts. On the other hand, support at 65. Mark Green is the first major support to watch. We've heard uh, Soloway talk about this. Sorry. You can kind of see it here a little bit higher then a little bit higher then you know, a decent amount higher. I think, you know, we're really coming down to here. So, we have this, the two lines are converging, and it's going to have to make a move. It's going to have to choose XRP, up or down, okay? Up, down, up, down, up, down. Shout out to Alex. All right, on the four-hour time frame, Ripple's trading above the dynamic support mark green last week. It caused, the spike caused the test, the, the 200 moving average, but failed to break above it. Then the bears pushed it down 9% to the Fibonacci retracement level, the 618. If it can break the 75%, it is expected that the 200 moving average will be tested again. Otherwise, support at the 7 cents is for a short-term support on this price path. Of course, if we get good news with the lawsuit, it's all over, right? I mean, it's all over. It's all over. That's. I think, to me, that's the uh, the parabolic move we've all been waiting for. Yeah, Andy Milanakis is big on Twitch. Yeah, big shout-out to Andy Milanakis. I used to love him on... Uh, what was it? The show with Adam Carolla and Jimmy Kimmel before he got all polite and everything. The, the man, man show. show. The man show with the Juggies. Shout out to Juggy on Twitch, part. man. Yeah, uh, shout out to trampolines all over the world. Uh, we, you know, we like our trampolines. Ziggy uh, we Zaki, like our Ziggy trapeze Zaki. artists. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot about that guy. Yeah, they had the raging alcoholic on that show. Uh, I remember I had to watch that show. This is how I'm going to date myself here. I used to have Netflix back when they had dvds and then you know you, you have your queue going so you don't want to like you don't want it to run out you just want it like just continuously flowing in and out of movies in and out of movies and the man show was like on back order it would always like stay at the top because I, I guess i had like one copy and it was like 500 people just trying to you know pass around season two disc three or whatever but yeah i watched it didn't hold up as well as i thought also watched 30 minutes of Fight Club with Alex. Did not hold up as well as I thought. We watched the first 30 minutes. I was like, you know, it was a movie for its time. And it's a great movie. Don't get me wrong. But I, I remember people canceling. Like, I saw people trying to cancel it a week or two ago. And I was like, oh, we, we don't like Fight Club anymore. And I watched it. I was like, eh. It's really interesting. There's several movies that I was in love with growing up that I've watched now as an adult. I'm like, what was, what was the appeal here? Yeah. Yeah. But Goofy movie? 
Still goaded. Still like a goofy movie. All right, uh, we got time for a couple quick hits. It's only 1224. Uh, I think Jay Chains has a couple Q&As. Uh, oh, yeah, Joe Rogan and Dang's Doug Stanhope. Yeah, that was like pre-podcast Joe. It was like, yeah, no one liked him then. You know, he, was, he played a jerk on news radio, so he had to, he had to fight that uphill battle to become likable. Uh, how do we stake our Pluto Alliance V1? We are in the, we're actually working with the dev team. I have tested it. All right, I have two staked, or I have one staked. We're testing it. Uh, we're, right now, we're having issues with API from OpenSea or Looks Rare, I think. And so, look, we're, we're trying to get it going. It's, it's, a, it's a dev issue right now, but I've seen it. I've seen it. I've tested it. I have actually staked. We just got, we're having issues, all the aliens popping up on uh, the screen. So, you know, it's just an API issue from OpenSea. So, we're trying to figure it out. We'll get all it right. squared away. All right, quick. Well, we have time for a quick hit here. An Atari quick hit. Atari claims its namesake token is unlicensed as it terminates blockchain joint venture. It appears to abruptly terminated the Atari token partnership, indicated that it still sees a bright future for blockchain related ventures within the company. Uh, this was published Monday. The firm said it's effective immediately terminated all license agreements with its partner IC, ICB Group and its subsidiaries. Previously, they had jointly created the Atari chain and the namesake token. However, the company has had a change of heart regarding the deal, announces disclaiming uh, interest in the joint venture, saying they're not authorized to represent Atari or its brands in any manner. Moving forward, they plan to create, distribute, and solely manage a new proprietary token focused on gaming, community, and utility. Okay, so they're canceling the one with the partner, and then it looks like they're just going to do it all on their own. I think that's going to be big. I think uh, a company like Atari can help bridge uh, a Web3 into a classic Web2 company. I think Atari is probably a good choice for Oculus. Oculus probably wants to operate as a closed system. It's going to take the market to force them to open up to Ethereum, to Wax, Solana, whatever the chain might be. And I think Atari could serve as a good vehicle for kind of bridge in the normie crowd, the people, oh, you know, I don't know, what do you, what do you mean some Ethereum, to, I don't know what, Cardano, oh, Atari token? You know, you, you'll get that, the people who buy Dogecoin, you know, the people who buy Shiba. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. We were all kind of that person, you know, my first coin, I remember I downloaded Coinbase, you know, Reddit, okay, you know, welcome, you're on your journey, finally. I'm about to buy some Bitcoin. And I see how cheap XRP is. Like on the app, I'm like, God, I can buy a fraction of Bitcoin or I could buy like a hundred of this coin. So, hey, we're all noobs at one point. You know, we're all noobs. Has it bled against Ethereum? Heck, it could have been the top of uh, Ethereum. It could have been January 2018. It's probably still bled against Ethereum. But uh, do we got any uh, other questions here? We got one from Jimmy Void. Jimmy Void. Me in the house. What brings a better pump? XRP settling the case or relisting it on exchanges? I think it's going to, that'll be a snowball effect. I think settling the case will cause a realisting, which will cause a mega pump. But what do you think? Well, I feel like if Coinbase puts it on their platform, everybody's assuming they won. And everyone's assuming, oh, they have inside information, which obviously that would, you know, kind of imply that. I think the case, I think the case, because some of these XRP, you know, some of these more sophisticated crypto traders, they're in these decentralized platforms. They have dry powder on the sidelines. They have money on Binance, on KuCoin, on whatever. And they're not waiting for a, a Coinbase listing. Some OG that, you know, is buying Bitcoin at a dollar, they're not waiting for it to pop up on Coinbase. They're waiting, oh, my buddy just texted me. Oh, I just got a Google alert. Oh, this was tweeted one minute ago. Oh, this just jumped 10% in one minute. They're buying it then with the money that they have sitting on the sidelines, you know, there's XRP, Bitcoin pairings, there's Ethereum, XRP pairings, there's, of course, Tether, USDC, all that. I think there's maybe even Doge. So I think that happens. Instant moon, instant skyrocket, instant longs across the board. People are going to get rich. Uh, the longs, in a weird way, longs will initially give us that insane velocity, but the longs will also be what stops it from going even higher than it should because you were going to go ahead and be just be taking profit, which will act as a sell on the blockchain or on the ledger. Uh, what else? What else do we got? What, what do you think? What, what's better? For what? Uh, the listing or listing on Coinbase or the tweet that, hey, we won? Uh, I mean, I think 
across the board the the tweet hey we won mm-hmm. is going to send resounding echoes through the crypto ecosystem paul meadow nick he used to have five bitcoin in 2014 that's okay because you're here now you're here when it's boring you're here you saw some of those charts you saw that glass no data that frankie gave uh you're in the you're in at a good time so is it 2014 good probably not but is it better than 2021 probably so feel feel good about that uh anything uh pants off dance off crypto pump you don't know what i have underneath here right now <laughs> Look, there's a long, it's a very long black t-shirt underneath this. That's all that is. Uh, did, we, did you have anything saved, question-wise? No, there was just one more from Trail Grinder. He'd asked if I had any motorcycle chips planned. I summer. saw that, yeah, yeah. So uh, what is up with the motorcycle? Tell us a little J Chain's motorcycle update here. Well, I turned 40 at the end of the month. Uh, I know, I'm getting old, man. Uh, and I'm going to Austin, Texas, so I'll be hanging out with my buddy. On the hog. On the hog. No, I'm flying there. But my buddy's got a couple bikes, so we'll do a couple rides in Austin. Definitely going to get okay. out into the mountains of North Carolina this summer around here. And then, hey, if anybody in the Bit Squad or the Meta Money, can't say the Mafia, that's Frankie's group, uh, our, our community. The Meta, the Meta Money, uh, the Meta Maniacs. Yeah, the, the Meta Maniacs. Maniacs. Hey, if any of you Meta, Meta Maniacs Money out Maniac. there ride a motorcycle and you want to ride this summer, hit me up. God, okay, again, DZ's blazed again. This, all right, you guys are high as the other it's it's frustrating to hear that it's frustrating to hear that uh one no two would not be able to speak three (laughs) you'd definitely be able to tell it looked much much worse uh devil devil eyes i'd have some of that we'll start calling that cali (laughs) dz some of that not of them satan irises so no uh all right i think that's all we got time for uh it was a great (laughs) It's a great, says we're lying, we're lying here. Uh, it was a great episode. Uh, ben will be back, him and TJ. I think we said maybe in the beginning of the episode, they're at E12, uh, C12, 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 that C12. Be back, it's a big leadership conference. Uh, CEOs, business leaders, they get together, they share advice, they share a strategy. They're coming back stronger, smarter, wiser, more adept. They're going to be steering the ship in the right direction. So that's why we like. I'll be doing the 9 p.m. and then I'll be back at 5 p.m. ATB. And until then, <laughs> the green each mocha clouds. You guys are funny. That's all we got. DZ out. Hit that like button.